Hello, everybody. Welcome. Nice to see you all here. If you could let me know in the chat where you're from, that would be great. Always interesting to see where people are. And is anyone taking the exam this weekend on Saturday? Great, nice to see you. Hi. Okay. Got Italy, Saudi Arabia, India, everywhere. Great. Okay. <clears throat> Sydney as well. Fantastic. Well, lovely to see you all here today. Um, what we're going to be doing today is um, reading a practice. Okay. Um, so we're going to um, uh, look at some questions and review some strategies. So first of all, if you're not um, already following us on YouTube, please do so. We've got loads of great videos and tutorials on the uh, YouTube channel as well as um, playlists. So you can, if you want to improve speaking, you can click on the speaking playlist. Okay, so do follow us on YouTube. Okay. Next week, there is another live lesson with Bethan, who's going to do something on speaking. Okay, providing structure in the OET role play, very, very important skill. So that's next Thursday, the 23rd at 1pm UK time. Uh, it's in um, the chat, you can go to our YouTube channel, you can go to our website and register there. Okay, it's in the chat box now. Uh, just to let you know as well, we've got an update to our digital course, Reach OETB. So if you're not already um, enrolled on this course, please do check it out because it's a full course, which gives you step-by-step -step guides to everything. It also includes four live lessons a week. So at the moment, if you're not on the course, you can only go to one. But if you're enrolled on the course, you can go to four. Okay, the uh, links are in the chat box now. It also includes loads of tutorial videos and two full practice tests. So be sure to check it out. Okay. Um, so we're going to look at a quick review of the reading A strategies and do some practice. So I'm going to launch a poll. I am curious, how do you manage your time? Okay, uh, in the reading A paper. A, I can finish in 15 minutes, no problem. B, I can sometimes finish, but I usually miss one or two questions. Or C, I usually get up to about number 14 or 15 before I run out of time. So please click on the poll, the option which matches how you manage your reading A time. Please, not in the chat box, we have a poll. Please click on the poll. Okay. Great. Okay, so a few of you are able to finish, but the majority not. Okay, just another couple of seconds. Hmm. Okay. Let's have a look at the results. I'm just going to share the results here. So yeah, so 21% can finish, 50% maybe missing one or two questions, and 29% only getting up to numbers 14 or 15. So what we want to do is to get it so that all of you are choosing option A, okay? Um, really, really is possible to do, okay, if you're using the strategies correctly. So, strategies and exam techniques. So, the first thing to do, do not read the text. If you try to read the text, you will run out of time, okay? So, that is the most important piece of advice I would give you first of all. So, you do need to look at them, but you just have a brief scan of them to see what kind of information is included. Are there any headings? What is the text about? Okay. Step two would be complete the matching task first without looking. So um, the matching task doesn't ask you to find the information. It asks you 
where the information is, but you don't actually have to find it. So if you don't need to look, don't look. Saves you so much time. And do the matching task first, okay? Because that's going to give you a broader overview of what information is in each text, and that will better prepare you for the other questions. Okay, I know there is some, some advice out there on various online platforms, do the matching task last. I would say don't listen to that advice, do it first. It's in that order for a reason. Then you're going to do the short answer question and sentence completion tasks. So here, you need to do three things. You need to decide what information you're looking for, which text to look in, and also use words and phrases in the questions to help you find the answer. So that's the three point strategy that you need to use for those um, tasks. OK, and you need to do it quickly. Um, if you cannot find the answer, move on. So, so important. I've had students time and time again saying, oh, I ran out of time because I spent five minutes on question number 14. I mean, if you can't find it in, in, in within a minute, maximum, move on. You can always come back to it at the end. Because imagine you spend five minutes on a question, you still don't find it or you get it wrong and you run out of time. So those of you who usually get up to 14 or 15 questions, what about questions 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20? What if they were really easy and really fast to find? You've missed out on five valuable points. So think about it that way. Remember the papers collected after 15 minutes. You can't write anything more after this time. So it is difficult, 15 minutes for 20 questions. That is less than one minute per question. So as I said before, there's no time to read the questions first. Remember, it's not testing your ability to read for detailed information. It's testing your ability to find information quickly like you would do in a hospital setting, for example. Imagine you've got a patient who needs their medication in that very second. You need to look at their chart and find out what their dosage is. So that's fine. You're not going to read through the entire set of case notes, are you? You're just going to scan, find that dosage and give them the medication. It's that kind of thing that you're doing in reading A. So let's have a little look. So, first of all, do not read the text. We're going to look at the text. So let's look at this together now, okay? So we're gonna look at one on burn. So here we've got burn depth, okay? Uh, so we know this is all about the different depths and we can also see that we've got superficial partial thickness, full thickness and mixed depth burns. So pay attention to those um, headings. Okay, so we've got a definition of how it's classified and then the three different ones. Text two we can see is all about fluid resuscitation. Okay, we've got some percentages here. We've got the suggested regimen. So we've got adults and children. So we can use those phrases, so those headings to help us find information. Tech C is the management for burns. So one thing that you can notice here is also that it's numbered. So it's going to go in the order of things you do it. So if you're looking for something at the beginning of the procedure, you look early on. If you're looking for something at the end, it's going to be here. Okay. And then we can see text D is the adult analgesic guidelines. So again, um, make a note um, in your head of any heading. So we've got adult analgesic guidelines, got some information here with some times, pain scores. And then we've got here pain score elicited from the patient. So what they assess their pain as so we've got mild pain, moderate pain, severe pain, and then we've got the different recommended analgesia. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And then you've got the pediatric ones here. Okay, so if you need to look for children, you'd go and have a look there. So we have a rough idea 
of what is on the paper. So we're going to do the matching task first, and we're going to try and do it without looking. So it asks you, in which text can you find information about mm? So we need to decide which text would contain the answer um, without looking. We'll only check if necessary. So age-related considerations for initial treatment of burns injuries. So that is probably going to be in text B, because remember we had a little look when we were looking at it and we saw there was something for adults and something for children. Okay, it's not about burn depth. It was about what to give them for different burns. And there was a clear distinct, uh, uh, distinction between children and adults. Okay, uh, risks involved in certain treatments. Okay, so we're talking about certain treatments here. It's probably going to be in C because it's talking about the management for burns. But you might have a quick look just to check that. Okay, what do you think? Let me know in the chat, which text do you think number four? Treatment informed by patient self-assessment and how to categorize the severity of a burn. So what do you think? Let me know in the chat box what you think. Mm -hmm. Just be careful if you're choosing A for number four. Did A talk anything about self-assessment? No, it talked about the burn depth. That's something that's assessed by the clinician. So it's not going to be A. Number four is not going to be A, but it could be for number five, as some of you are suggesting. Yeah, the treatment informed by a patient self-assessment. Remember, there was that bit um, on the analgesic guidelines, yeah, because it was the pain scale as informed by the patient. So we saw that heading, so we know it's number four. So we give them analgesics based on if it's mild, moderate, or severe pain. How to categorize the severity of a burn? That's going to be A. Yeah, it was the partial thickness, um, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Okay, let's look at the sentence completion. Okay, so you need to complete the sentence with a word or a short phrase from one of the texts. Now, it's very important that you copy the words directly from the text, don't change it. So you need to decide what kind of information to look for first. So classification of burn injuries depends on the amount of, mm, caused the amount of something so it's going to be some sort of noun we also are going to use words from the sentences to help us locate the answer so we need to identify perhaps underline the keywords so we're looking at you know classification depends on amount of something okay we then need to decide which text to look in and this is obviously going to be in text A. So now let's scan for the answer, keeping an eye on, we're looking for an amount of something caused and how to classify. So if we look here straight away, we've got burn injuries are classified according to how much amount, tissue damage is present. So we know the answer is going to be tissue damage. Yeah, it's the amount of tissue damage present. Okay, let's look at the next one. So the same thing. What information are we looking for? Patients recovering from third degree burns are likely to experience a great deal of shrinkage and mm, of their skin. So again, it's going to be another noun, yes? Yeah? So shrinkage and something else of the skin. What are the key words? 
Well, it's going to be third degree burns, and we're going to look for a synonym of shrinkage. So getting smaller or decreasing or something like that. And which text do we think it's going to be in? Probably text A, because it had the different classifications of the burns. So let's take a look. Here, we've got full thickness burns, also known as third degree. And we're looking for a synonym of shrinkage. And we've got contraction. And so the other word is scarring. Yeah, healing associated with considerable contraction, so shrinkage and scarring. Okay, so have a look at number eight. So again, when evaluating mixed depth burns, you should take into account how the burn looks and whether there is something in the affected area. So what are the keywords? Let me know in the chat. What do you think? What are the key words in sentence number eight? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mixed depth burns. It's really going to help us find the answer. Any other keywords? Other than mixed depth burns, depth burns. Yes, how does the burn look? So we're going to be looking at a synonym of how it looks, appears, things like that. Absolutely. All right. So, so we're looking at how it looks and if there is something. And which text is it going to be in? So we're evaluating mixed depth spans. Yes, it's going to be in text A. So let's have a little look. So mixed depth burns, we know straight away is here. Da, 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 da. Oh, look, uh, appearance and the presence of sensation. So we need to estimate the average depth by the appearance, how it looks, and if there is sensation. So the answer is sensation, yes. What about number nine? You should cool burn injuries by taking off any mm or jewellery that the patient is wearing. So we're looking again for a noun, perhaps a piece of clothing. What are the key words in sentence number nine, do you think? Let me know in the chat. What are the key words? Okay, yes, absolutely. Taking off, lots of you have put. Any others? Okay, yes, cool burn injuries, taking off. And also we're gonna scan for jewelry because it's jewelry or something else. And what text is it going to be in? It's definitely gonna be in text C. So let's find it. So da -da 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 -da, let's have a little look. Oh, look straight away. Cooling. Remove jewelry or hot clothing. So we know the answer is hot clothing. We write it down. We move on to the next question. Look how quick we did that. That was in about 20 seconds. So you can do this. Yeah. Make sure that you put hot clothing down. Yeah, you need to do the adjective as well. Okay. Short answer questions are very similar. Okay, but instead of a sentence, it's a question. So in each question, you will find what kind of information you're looking for. For example, here, what factor? and details to help you locate the information. So we've got mixed depth burns, determines and local treatment. So we're looking for a factor that determines the treatment in mixed depth burns. We then need to decide which text to look in. 
So this one is probably going to be in text A because it's talking about the burn depth. So let's have a little look. So we're going to go straight away to mixed depth burns. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking for local treatment. There it is. Local treatment should be based on the burn thickness at any specific site. So we know the answer is thickness. OK, because we're looking for the factor that determines the treatment. So the factor is the thickness. Let's look at number 15. What is the maximum number of tries recommended for attaching a drip at the scene of a burns incident? So again, we're looking for maximum number of tries. And the key words probably attaching a drip, the scene of a burns incident. And yes, it's probably going to be in text B. Yes, because fluid resuscitation, you use a drip. Mm -hmm. So let's go there. So we're looking for scene of the burns and attaching a drip. OK, or IV cannulation or something like that. So we're looking for the scene of the burn. So here we've got something straight away. Intravenous fluids should be started as soon as possible on the scene, although transfer should not be delayed by more than two cannulation attempts. So we know the answer is, as everybody's writing in the chat, the maximum is two. Okay. So let's have a look at the next one. So we've got how much resuscitation fluid should a child receive per kilo over 20 kilograms? So what are we looking for? We're looking for a quantity. And what are the key words for question number 16? Child, yes. Aha, uh -huh. so child per kilo over 20 kilograms. Yeah, and what text is it going to be in? That's right, text B. So let's have a look. So we're looking for the quantity of resuscitation fluid per kilo. Very important. So we're going straight to children. Give 100 milliliters per kilogram for the first 10 uh, kg body weight plus for the next plus for each extra kg. So the answer is 20 milliliters because it's 20 milliliters per kg yeah so you've got to make sure you choose the right option here say with number 17 before attaching a fluid resuscitation drip to a nine-year-old burns patient what percentage of the body needs to be affected so what kind of information are we looking for here Mm. We're looking for a percentage. Absolutely. So a percentage of the body and the key words are for number 17. Yes, nine year old. Yes. So we know it's a child, nine year old burns patient. Absolutely. Drip and before attaching and it's going to be in text B for sure. So let's see if we can find out. So we're looking for the percentage of body that needs to be affected as in burned. So text B. So you might think it's going to be down the bottom, but it's not. OK, because it's we're talking about before, before we give it. OK, so have a little look here. If the burn area, we've got these percentages here. OK, so we know in adults or 10 percent in children should be started. So it's if the burn area is over 10 percent in children. So the answer is 10 percent. OK, 10 percent or, or over. OK. And the last one, what are we looking for? 
what additional analgesic is recommended in the first instance for a patient with a moderate level of pain? So we're looking for additional analgesic. What are the key words in number 18? Yeah, moderate pain for sure. Yes, in the first instance as well. Uh-huh. And it's going to be clearly yes in text D. So let's have a little look. So we know straight away we're going to the second column, moderate pain. And we're looking at um, additional analgesics. So it says recommended analgesia in addition to column one. And we are looking for tramadol. So some common mistakes, incorrect spelling. Don't make that mistake. Spelling must be accurate, so copy the words carefully. If you copy it incorrectly, you don't get the point. Another mistake is reading the text first. You just don't have time. Don't do it. Another mistake is spending too long on a question. If you can't find the answer, Move on. You can always come back to it later if you have time. Also, another common mistake is repeating things stated in the questions in your answer. So, for example, the question is, what is the maximum dose allowed? And if you write 10 milligrams maximum, you'd get it wrong. We don't write maximum because it's already expressed in the question. OK. Um, Another mistake is not reading the question carefully. So for example, here, imagine the question is, what is the maximum dose allowed? And you put eight to 10 milligrams. That's not the maximum. That's the range. It's minimum to maximum. So you'd get it incorrect. So you just need to write the top end of the range, 10 milligrams. So little tricks like this can really make a difference. OK. So summary of strategies, do the matching task first, decide which text contains the answer. Only look if you need to. For the other tasks, what information are you looking for? What are the keywords? Which text am I going to look in? Go and find it and then move on. Literally, you've got to go that fast. What am I looking for? What are the keywords? Where am I looking? Go find it, write it down. Next question, okay? You have to go that fast. Don't waste any time. If you can't find the answer quickly, move on and be careful of your spelling. Okay, uh, follow those strategies, train in them. Don't waste any time. Okay, we have time for a couple of questions very quickly. Uh, if you want to write in the Q&A, so any questions about reading, uh, please pop in the Q&A box. <clears throat> okay, any questions? about reading, please put in the Q&A box, okay? Okay. Will the questions follow a sequential pattern? So going in order, um, the answer is no, they don't. That's why you always have to decide which text to look in. Yeah, because it can be any part of the text and in any text, yeah? So you absolutely need to um, decide um, which text it is. So you take each one separately, they're not connected. We also have a question about uh, capital letters. Can I use capital letters? And the answer is yes. You can write everything in capital letters, but you need to be consistent. Don't start using lowercase letters and uppercase letters, depending. 
be consistent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so really, really important that you spend time training and going fast. Okay, we have a question. What do you suggest in two days to speed up my answers? Well, the question is, is just use those strategies. Yeah. So you've got to do what am I looking for? What are the keywords? Which text? Go, scan, find it, right. You've literally got to go like that. Push yourself. Imagine you're your own um, trainer. Yeah, it's like a sports coach. They're saying, go, 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 go. You know, you've got to get the momentum going and be able to do that. Okay. And one last question. Should I start from question one? Yes. Do the matching task first, questions one to five or one to seven and then move on to the other tasks, okay? Right, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. So thank you very much for your time. Um, keep studying. Uh, don't forget, we've got Providing Structure in the OET Roleplay coming up next week on Thursday with Bethan, very important. So don't forget to register for that. Um, Okay, so you need to register like in today's session for this one. Follow us on social media. We are throwing lots of tips and strategies and videos and ideas out there. Be sure to follow us. And if you're not already um, using our courses, we've got Reach OETB for nursing and medicine, which gives you all the, um, all, all the preparation you need for OET. We've also got a writing correction service and also you can buy practice tests to do with feedback. Okay, so all the links are in the chat there or just check out our website specialistlanguagecourses.com. Okay, thanks very much everybody. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.